Today we're going to be talking about the Han Dynasty. The Han Dynasty is considered to be the classical age of Chinese history, similar to uh, Greece and Rome being the classical age of Europe. This particular dynasty lasted from 206 BC to 220 AD. Make sure that you recognize that this lasted uh, between BC and AD. So to start talking about the Han Dynasty, you need to remember that a dynasty is a ruling family in China. And the dynastic cycle describes the rise and fall of these ruling families. In order to have a dynasty in China, that dynasty needs to have the mandate of heaven or the um, approval of the Chinese gods. And out of the former dynasty, the Qin dynasty, came the founder of the Han dynasty, uh, Lu Bang. He was a um, originally a peasant and a general in the Chinese uh, military. Through his overthrow of the previous dynasty, he becomes their first leader. Another famous Han leader was someone who was nicknamed the Martial Emperor. The Martial Emperor was a guy by the name of Wu Di. He was the great grandson of Lu Bang. He ruled from 141 to 87 BC, the longest of the Han. And the reason he was named the Martial Emperor is because he helps to expand the Han Dynasty through the use of warfare, which is where he gets his nickname from. New changes came out of the Han in terms of their government. Remember under Shi Huang Di, he used legalism or the idea of rewards and punishments to unite China. But under the Han, they replaced the ideas of legalism with that of Confucianism. Remember the, the five relationships and the idea of a superior setting examples for inferiors. Um, through Confucianism, because there's such an emphasis on education, they set up these schools. And the schools were really important to the Han government because they used a bureaucracy, and meaning that different people had different responsibilities within the government and they were trained in those responsibilities to make sure that the best and the brightest were in the the government they had to take these exams called civil service exams um, and this is similar to the civil service exam that's taken today by government officials like postal workers or members of the FBI. You have to take this exam to ensure that you have the education necessary to be a member of the government. And these, um, these exams were like the regents a hundred times over. They lasted three days and you would sit in these rooms similar to like dressing rooms in a in a store, just these tiny rooms, room after room after room, and you'd stay there for three days answering these test questions. And the exams were based on not just things like ch Chinese law, but ideas of Confucianism, history, and traditions. But here's the problem. This bureaucracy works because you have the most educated people running the government. But you have to remember that in ancient China, not everyone had equal access to education. Only the wealthy could afford to send their children to these schools to prepare them for the civil service exam. And that meant only really the wealthy were participating in government. The other problem is because there's such an emphasis on the idea of family and family honor, things like filial piety, respecting your elders, if someone did not pass a civil service exam, you were seen as being sort of a, um, a disappointment to your family. So these exams played a big role, not just in government, but also in the culture of, um, of the Han. The Han economy was based in agriculture. Agriculture was considered one of the most important jobs, and that's because during this time period, China is going through a population boom, and they have to be able to feed the um, the growing population. So agriculture is uh, very important. There were also other technological advances that they made in agriculture that we'll talk about in just a minute. The government held monopolies. 
on many agricultural products. And a monopoly is like the game. It's where a group, in this case the Han government, had exclusive control over all aspects of the production and distribution of a particular product. The game monopoly, the idea is to take over the entire board. Similar idea. And one of the products that the Chinese government had a monopoly on was silk. Some of the achievements that came out of the Han Dynasty, um, this is when they start to develop the idea of medical colleges, which is going to be used not just in China, but the idea would eventually spread to uh, Europe and other parts of the world as well. They invented a lot of different things, including the seismograph, which is important because China is on the Pacific Ring of Fire. So being able to um, read and detect uh, earthquakes was really important. This is when acupuncture was developed, new seeds and fertilizers, some of that new technology that I mentioned before to make sure that they had enough food for everybody, the wheelbarrow, the sundial, and paper. And all of these new inventions would eventually be spread to other parts of Asia and eventually to Europe through the Silk Road. The end of the Han comes like many other uh, dynasties. Remember that as part of the dynastic cycle, the uh, the rulers start to become more self-indulgent or there's natural disasters and people believe that they lose the mandate of heaven. This occurred too in the Han. The leaders start to become more self-indulgent. They worry less about keeping up the roads and the infrastructure of China and instead on worry about themselves and their palaces. There's a widening gap between the rich and the poor, a similar issue that occurred um, the, in ancient Rome before their fall. And finally, foreign invasions start to occur. And this leads the people to believe that they have lost the mandate of heaven. Thank you.